to worship you, to be taught, and to be encouraged of you. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, because you are too present to ever abandon us or even fail us. You're too faithful to fail us. We thank you this morning because of the bread of life that you have set before us, O oh God. We receive it with thanksgiving. And as your church, we pray that we may be edified even as we come out of this place, that we may be strengthened in our walk of faith all to the glory and praise of your name. I submit to your leadership, Master Jesus, I ask you that you use me as a vessel to relay that which is your oracles. In the name of Jesus, we give thanks and you do pray. Amen, amen. Allow me to read before I introduce the topic, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, from verse 1. And uh, I will add somewhere. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sin, led away by various lusts. Today, I have a message from the Lord and I believe that as I share the word of God, the church will continue being equipped and empowered in our walk of faith. I thank God that every time we gather in this place, the Lord always has something for us. At times you listen to the word, and at times you feel, okay, that has not happened to me, I can't relate to it, but a few days down the line, something happens and you remember that word. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. The word of God is what will keep you going. The word of God is what gives you the foundation. Because in our journey of faith, there are many things that will happen along the way. What I've read in the book of 2 Timothy, it is about the times we are living in. And all of us can attest we are living in the perilous times that things get worse and worse. And in the book of Matthew, the Bible says that in the last days, lawlessness will increase and the hearts of many will turn cold. What will make the hearts of men grow cold? It's because the wickedness, the lawlessness, most likely is going to bring pain. It's going to bring uh, disability. And so because of that, the love of Christ in them will grow cold. But I pray this morning, one of the things that uh, the Bible is attesting will happen in the last days, it is about traitors. The Bible says that many will be traitors. Watu wakusaliti wengine. And to, so today, this morning, I want to touch on one of those elements, some of those things that are bound to happen in these last days. Most likely, some of us have already gone through that. Some of us are in it. And some of us, it will happen. But I would want that the Church of Christ be equipped with this knowledge because you don't know when you're going to need it. Praise be to God. So today, I'm going to be talking about handling betrayal. Praise be to God. That is my topic for today. And uh, uh, over the last few days in the media, there's been quite a lot. Quite a lot. And we see so much of that betrayal. Things shared in secret, but within a very short time, they're in the public. And let me caution each one of us. Whatever you do with your phone, it is not secret. Praise be to God. The Facebooks, the TikToks, those things, they are made by men. People have access. So some of these things you're thinking it's just between us, but you don't know who has access to it. 
And so we have seen a lot of betrayal. We have seen pictures posted of betrayal. We have seen uh, murder, people killing one another, even in families. A wife is betrayed by their husband, they, it ends up in murder. A, a husband is betrayed by the wife, the whole, uh, the whole family, it is swept clean. Praise be to God. Those are the times we are living in. And as a church, it is good you know, it is no strange thing that is happening. It is written in the word of God. And if it is written, it means it will have to be fulfilled. Praise be to God. So you be equipped. And when you see these things happening, you become aware these are the last days. And the Lord will, uh, would want us this morning to know how to handle when traitors come our way, when we are betrayed, when our trust is broken, how are you supposed to handle that? Praise be to God. And I can tell you, this is something I've gone through again and again. And if that is the test that God has set before you, lazima uipite. Many times I failed. I failed. And maybe as we go through the sermon, you'll understand how I failed. I failed, I failed, I failed. Every other time it would happen. Until the last time, God was so gracious because I had really cried to God. And I had told him, Lord, this thing, I don't want it to happen to me. Na mungu kwa sababu ananipenda sana. And probably, akaona anisaidie. So the last betrayal that happened, it happened uh, to us as a family. So my husband was there to help me through the journey and walk with me. And praise be to God. I pray even you. Iyo kitu imekushinda. God help, sends a divine helper. Akusaidia we overcome. Praise be to God. Some of us, we need someone to hold our hand. Wakati tunakutua na mambo ingine. So that you can go through it victoriously. Praise be to God. But I thank God because of his grace that is always able to teach us and to guide us. So what is a betrayal? Betrayal is violation of a person's trust or confidence violations of a person's trust or confidence. And uh, one thing about betrayal, and the saddest thing about it, it never comes from our enemies. It never comes from our strangers. Most of the time, it happens between people we know. Sometimes it could be um, a, a friend, it could be a family member, a business partner, an employer, you know. So it is people we have been around with them. And I think that's what makes it so sad because it most likely will happen with people we have trusted, we have walked on a journey. Another thing about betrayal, most of the time it is unexpected because once you begin a journey of friendship with somebody, you never anticipate that at any given time, the secrets you share, the things you share in confidence, at any given time, those things can get out there. But it happens. Praise be to God. As a child of God, uh, the Lord would want us to know this morning that when betrayal happens, as a believer, you need to know it is a test. Praise be to God. It is a test. And when it comes, you, want to you ought to remember the many people in the Bible who went through betrayal and how they handled it. So it is a test. And most of the time, is it a, if, when you see betrayal happenings, it means ahead of you, there's a greater victory. There's a greater promotion. Most of the time, it will come. Wakati, shetani ameona hapo mbele, there's a great promotion that is coming your way. And betrayal comes. Just to dissuade us. That, just to distract us from where we were going. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 25, verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, I'm going to read from New Living Translation, Proverbs 25, verse 9 to 10. When arguing with your neighbor, don't betray another person's secret. Others may accuse you of gossip, and you'll never regain your good reputation. The word of God is telling us that usually betrayal will happen when there are disagreements, where there is an argument. But the Bible is telling us when there's that argument, when there's that disagreement, don't betray the other person's secret. Why? Because when betrayal happens, the word of God is telling us, you might never regain a good reputation. 
So one of the things that happens with betrayal, it is the element of that good repetition, it goes away. And, uh, you know, uh, as you was being told in the morning, what is in a name? I believe a good name is, very, is something very nice. At times, people don't care. But from the word of God, the Bible says a good reputation, a good name is better than an expensive perfume. Praise be to God. So when we have disagreements, when we have arguments, uh, when you disagree with someone, maybe you have been friends, you've been doing business together, then there's an ad a disagreement. Then at that moment, what wants to creep in is betrayal. Where now, because out of anger, out of bitterness, you end up speaking out the secrets, those things that you shared in confidentiality. Sometimes betrayal will happen when maybe it is uh, your employer. He had promised you a promotion, but he didn't fulfill it. Bypassed you and gave it to someone else. A, a friend shared some private information about you with others, some secrets, things that they just belong to two of you. A spouse was unfaithful. All those things, they can, that is, those are just but a few examples. Those are things that you can relate with and that can result to that sense of betrayal. But because you know it is a test, because you know it's, it is a test, how are you supposed to handle this? The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'm going to read the message Bible. Uh, no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the cause of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He will never let you be pushed past your limit. He is always be there to help you come through it. So the word of God is telling us that whatever test, whatever temptation may come your way, it is not something uncommon. There are other people who have gone through the same, same things and they overcame. And also it, tell us, it tells us that remember, God will not let you down. Church, if there are things you need to hold very close to your heart, God will never fail you. Praise be to God. God will never fail you. No matter your circumstances, always remember, our God will never fail us. And so the word of God is encouraging us. What is happening to you? It is nothing uncommon. And most of the time, when we go through uh, these seasons, like if it's a season of pain, it is a season of discouragement, most people tend to isolate themselves. You're thinking, for the rest of the world, I'm the only one going through this. I can tell you, as some things are happening here in Kenya, the same, same thing is happening in India. It is happening in another country. And when we know that, then we are encouraged to know even the, that other people are going through the same things and they are not giving up. Again, the Bible says God will help us through it. Church, have this confidence that our God is our helper. He's our present time in our times of trouble. It doesn't matter the magnitude of the trouble. Do you have confidence that God is able to help you? For me, I have known that no matter what comes my way, God is able to help me. And he will lead me to that I do not fail. One thing I keep saying is that God has not brought you to his kingdom to set you up for failure. No, that is not our, that is the, the God we serve he does not set us up for failure. And that is one thing that gives me so much confidence. That even though sometimes the battle is very intense. Vita inakuwa ngumu sana. I know the Lord has not set me for failure. He will come through for us. Because that's what he says. He will come and help me through it. Now, because betrayal is a test. The main thing about betrayal. It is not about the betrayal itself. It is our response. It is how we respond. And this morning, let me say with all, uh, uh, with all confidence, God does not cause betrayal. It is not God. Our God is good. And church, I want you to have this other affirmation, that the God 
who has saved us and called us to his kingdom. He is a good God. The Bible says in him there is no evil. Let me tell you, church, if at this moment you still doubt if God is good, then you need to work on that. Because if there's something that the enemy is happy about, is when he's able to convince a believer, Atakamani 1%, that there's an element of God that is not good. This week, I posted a statement that good things happen to them that believes God loves them. As a believer, if you still doubt God is good, if you still believe, doubt God is love, then that is where the enemy is managing to keep you down and down again. Church, let us have this affirmation and believe. One, God is good. Number two, God loves us. And he does not love us because of who you are. He does not, lo he does not love us because of what we do. He loves us because he is love. And he has already paid the price for us. So there's nothing for us. For us, it is to accept what God has already given unto us. So I was saying that when betrayal happens, it is not more so about that betrayal. It is not about what has been done. What the enemy is triggering in you is the response. How do you respond to this? And if you step, if you respond in a way that pleases the Lord, then it becomes a stepping stone to your promotion and greater victories in, in your life. But if you respond the way the enemy wanted you to respond, then it becomes that point where you start to suffer defeat. Like I said, God does not want us to fail. He's there helping us walk with us. What will help us, it is when we know his word. And at that moment, when this test comes, there's a disappointment, there's a pain. At that moment, you ought to remember that this one is a point where it will be my breaking forth, it will be armor, it will be that point, then now, you know, you go back to where you are. I pray this morning, when such things happen to us, there are many things that will happen to our lives that will cause us pain, will cause us disappointment. Don't look at the circumstances. Look at it as a means and a way to a greater victory in your life. And for this reason, the only, that, the only thing that will keep you standing at that point is when you know the word of God. So I have said betrayal, God does not cause betrayal, and our response, it is what is needed. And of course we know, as Romans 8, 28 will tell us, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Mambo yote ufanyika kwa wema, kwa wale wanao mpenda mungu, na mayo na kusudi lake. When we know that, as a church, it doesn't matter the test. All we know is that this is meant to work for my good. Every time betrayal would happen in my life, I went through so much pain. I remember the last time it happened, not the last time, because that time I failed the test. I remember I actually I felt something like had pierced my heart. Nilisikia kitu imenidunga moyo and I screamed. Luckily we were in somewhere inside the vehicle. And um, it, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I felt someone has pierced me with a sword. That is how betrayal is like. And I remember as I, I was screaming, and I was screaming, you know, like <laughs> the intensity. The person we were with, anyway, I thank God for, for that person. I will not say it's a he or a she. But their response, they did not even make matters better. At that moment, though I always remember, they told me, I hope the pain you're feeling right now, you remember it next time when you do what you did. Wow. What an encouragement. But from there, I was able to rise up. They told me the truth. And some of us, we need some friends who can tell us the truth. At that point, Sazile Kauchungu, 
all those they, they tell us don't add salt to injury. Uh, when the injury is there, mtu anakuongezea salt. Na ndio after that unaamka kabisa. You'll never go back to that. I don't know. I don't know whether you have that grace, but maybe but it really it is not easy because at that point you also feel like ata wewe you are joining together with my enemies. I want to be comforted. But that has kept me going. That every time nina dipata mahali naweza jikuta hiyo point where I maybe I'm sharing some confidential information I remember the pain I went through and so the pain that you might feel God is able to work it around to work out for your good praise be to God the bible says them that Christ has already called to himself he's working you know he's conforming them to the likeness of his son and church I want you to be at that point when you're fully convinced God loves you God will never fail you and God is good. Wakati utakutana na majaribu ya kukutengeneza. Kwa sababu wakati tuliokoka hatujafanana na Bwana Yesu. So we are being conformed. Na conformity haikujangi rahisi. Wakati mwingine inakuja na uchungu. Now when we are being conformed, please cooperate. Cooperate to ndio safari iendelee tu kufanana na Bwana Yesu. It is not easy but the grace is always there. So most of the time when you go through these challenges stop using them to to condemn yourself to judge yourself at that moment I want you to remember God loves me hata kama ameruhusu hii pite another thing God is good na hii mambo yote hata kama sio mazuri God remains to be good so we find there is always a safe place to go the place of God Bwana Yesu asifiwe Hallelujah In the Bible we have some good examples and bad examples of people who handled betrayal in a manner and in a way that pleased the Lord and they were able to overcome and they were they, they were able to to be promoted and enter to great victories. There are so many examples I may not be able to mention all of them but I would just want briefly to go through three people who went through betrayal in the bible and we see how they handled it and so we can learn from them for the bible says we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses yani kuna mashahidi wako hapo wanatuangalia because they've gone through the journey we've gone through and they overcame and they are cheering us the bible says they are cheering us hawako hapa kuangalia vile unaanguka they are there telling you you can do it you can make it praise be to god um One of the people it is David. We've just gone through the book of David uh, da, uh, Samuel, first and second Samuel, and there was a lot about this man David. And uh, David he was betrayed not once, not twice. And who are the people that betrayed David? One of them it was King Saul. Someone David was willing to serve and work with. But this person they're not willing to to be able to serve with him. A friend, maybe I'll just say a friend, a partner. David was betrayed by his, his own son Absalom. And we just covered that the other day. Some of his advisors like Ahithophel they also betrayed him. And we find in all these instances where David is betrayed, how did he behave? We see in the book of Psalms chapter 55 verse 12 to 14. We see David actually mentioning that It is not an enemy who reproaches me then I could bear it nor is it one who hates me who has exalted himself against me then I could hide from him but it was you a man my equal my companion and my acquaintance we took sweet counsel together and we walked to the house of God in the throne that's what David would say of betrayal that it was not strangers 
it is the people who are like just, he actually says, it was you, a man my equal, my companion. A companion, it's not someone you have walked in with for one day. An acquaintance, it's not someone you've just met. And they say, these people, they even went to the house of God together. They took counsel together. These are the people who betray them. I believe to each one of us, if betrayal comes from those people who don't believe, maybe it is easy to handle it. But when it happens in the church, in the house of God, I can tell you, it is not an easy test. Because to most of us, we want church to be that place of safety. Praise be to God. And I pray as Trinity House, Please, 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 let people not come to the house and have to go through that pain in the house of God. It may happen because God is still training us, but I pray it is not you who is going to be used of that. I remember some times back, um, one service I attended, actually it was one of my first services, the church we used to worship. And I remember the man of God preaching about Judas. And I've always, I used to wonder, why did, Judas, why did Judas, why was he used to betray Jesus? What was it about him? But I always remember what the man of God says. Because in him, there was some wickedness. There was something, a foothold, something he had given. He is in, he is in the fellowship. He is a disciple. But ndani yake katika moyo, kuna kitu ilikuwa ukondani. And, God, and I remember the man of God says, we have those people in the house of God. Na watatumika kufundisha watu. Because God want to train me about forgiveness. God want to train me about long suffering. I pray it is not you. Watatufundisho na watu wa uko dunia. But in the house of God, we are all united because we are friends of Jesus. May we love one another. May we be the people to comfort one another. And so David, the very people who are close, and that is why I said, betrayal will not happen with strangers. It is people who are close to us. But how did David handle uh, the betrayal? One thing David did not do, he never stayed in mourning when it happened. He didn't stay, he didn't prolong the, 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 the period of mourning. Actually, the Bible says that in the, the same chapter 15, verse 16 to 17, he actually, he says, but I call to God and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. That is the English standard version. He says he called upon the name of the Lord. He did not prolong the morning, the morning neither did he allow himself to be bitter. One thing that happens when betrayal happens, uh, one of the immediate things, there's bitterness, and the next thing, if you don't take care of the bitterness, there's going to be revenge. You know, it keeps growing and getting worse. And that is why you find in the world today, even in Kenya, you know, when a um, when husband, because maybe he feels, I don't know, but at night when the wife is sleeping, he comes with a knife and kills the wife. What is that? It is probably bitterness that grows to a level of revenge. So David, one of the things he did, he didn't overstay there in that period. And I pray to each one of us, whenever we go through seasons of pain, seasons of sorrow, usikaya potena sana. Don't over, don't over, you know, overstay there. You need to move on. So David was quick to move on and did not allow his heart to grow bitter. Again, he cried to the Lord. He called upon the name of the Lord. Yani alienda kwa mungu, akamwaga moyo wake, akamwambia hi na hi imefanyika. God did not go to his friends. Again, that is one other thing that will happen when betrayal happens. Instead of going to God, we go to our friends. David did not go to his friends. He went to the Lord. He went to the Lord. You know why? Because betrayal, like we've said, it happens when there's a disagreement between a friends. So the more you continue emptying your heart, telling others, to some extent, nika gossip, 
and reputation is being uh, reputation in Aribika, a good name. So the reason David did not go telling uh, his friends, see what my son has done, see what King Saul has done to me. Actually, as you are reading the book of Second, I don't see David discussing most of his issues. Actually, I don't remember him discussing his problems with anyone. Most of the time, he would go before God. So David turned to God as his source of healing and as his source of justice. I pray this morning, maybe that has happened to you. And if it will happen to you, may you turn to God to be your source of healing and justice. Another person we see in the Bible, it is Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. I can tell you, a betrayal in the family, it runs deep. It's not a very easy thing to handle, but it is possible to handle. See at Haiwezi, it is possible, but it runs deep. Because family, it's people you didn't choose to belong to them. Not a friend, you have chosen that to be a friend. But familia ulijipata. Yeah? You didn't choose your uncle. You didn't choose your auntie. Ulijipata kwa your familia. And so, when betrayal happens in the family, it can really hurt. And I think we have seen this. That when it happens, ni mambo ya, ni, ni, it is maybe things to do with shambas and everything. And because people are not able to handle it, unaskia watu wa meuliwa, a whole family has died in an accident because somebody somewhere is very angry. And the reason uh, David, uh, Joseph was betraying his brothers, they despised him because his father favored him. Yani, sometimes you'll not be betrayed because you are a bad person. Or uh, normally, actually I wouldn't say betrayal happens because you are a bad person. But David, uh, Joseph, his brothers, just because the father seems to favor him, they decided to, to betray him. And what we see is, uh, they, first they had decided they are going to kill him, but they changed their mind and decided they are going to sell him into slavery. Then what happens? David has, uh, Joseph has been sold into slavery, and many, many years back, he meets his families. The same people when you were in hayo mamboyote. How did Joseph respond? In the book of Genesis 45 verse 5, NIV, Genesis 45 verse 5, he says, And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourself for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. So the moment uh, Joseph met his family, he was very gracious and forgiving to them. I can tell you, when uh, someone betrays you, we'll have an opportunity to meet them again, especially when it comes to family. Betrayal in the family, atakama, watu lazima utakutana na wao. But when you meet them, just like Joseph, may the grace of God abound unto you. May you be gracious. May you be forgiving unto them. And so we see Joseph, the moment they sold him, but he did not, the moment they came back to him, they were in need. He did not use that opportunity to revenge or even to remind them. And I tell you, he jaribu ni kubwa sana. I've been betrayed by family members, especially when it comes to money. Praise be to God. Na pesa ni mzuri. Na pia, eh, I don't know. You know, a family member calls you, tells me, I have this business deal. Nataka tu 10K, nienda niuze in the next two hours. Na kutumia pesa yako, na chai. Two years down the line, it has not happened. And you feel, surely, kwani unani chukulia aze? Kwani unani beba aze? But these are our family members. And the thing about family members, they will do that once. And they will do it again. Atakuja tu ten, atajifanya, nimesahau. My sister. Unaweza nisaidia tu na 5k uh, gari imeisha mafuta na nilikuwa na na wateja. And what do you do? Again, you forgive and you be gracious to them. It is not easy, but I said it is possible. Praise be to God. So when you get an opportunity, please remember Joseph. By the alikuwa na wakati mzuri sana. Because he's the prime minister, he's a big person in that nation. In that nation, 
angesema au wote wachukuliwe wafungiwe wateseke si walinifanyia hivi na hivi but joseph because he knew that was his stepping stone to greater victories and promotion he did not give in to bitterness he did not give in to revenge i remember during this time of elections in our nation some people had a lot of fear because we all know what happened with our president today there was some level of betrayal in by the friends in the last government and i remember most of us we were praying that his heart will not be bitter so that when he gets to power now he used power to revenge and i pray if you love our president continue praying for him betrayal sa zile bado uko huku chini you can assume those issues but when you're in a place of power yeah ni wewe umeketi pale you're the bank manager alafu unaona ule mtu mli ali alikukon pesa amekuja anataka bank loan and you're the bank man wewe unafaa ku sign eh si kuna hiyo feeling ya uh, this is the time lord you present hmm? you lay a table before my enemies na kuna hiyo ka ka, ka kitu ka kutaka ku revenge may you overcome in jesus name the other person it is jesus himself our master in the series that we do for our children we base it uh we actually the way the, the lessons we do uh, for our children we usually have called them in step with our master everything we teach our children in step with our master who is our master our master is jesus christ and him himself he went through betrayal yesu mwenyewe he was betrayed by an acquaintance judas walikuwa ametembea na yesu for three years he was part of the disciples and even though jesus was the son of god he went through betrayal why because in this life it will happen to us but our master showed us how to to overcome and how to do it and we can see jesus his pain of betrayal being expressed in the book of psalms 41 verse 9 Psalms 41 verse 9 it says uh, the ESV version even my close friend in whom i trusted who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me that is jesus our master he was god but judas betrayed him how did jesus respond jesus did not allow anger He did not allow bitterness to creep in his, his heart. He did not seek revenge. Neither did he ask God to rain fire over Judas. He moved on. He moved on. Jesus moved on. He knew he was on a course. There was a journey that had been set before him and he needed to walk into that victory. So, we see our master Jesus even though many times, even though he was betrayed, Sometimes he was insulted. He would entrust himself to the one who judges justly. 1 Peter 2 verse 23 verse NIV. He entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. If betrayal happens to you or something that has caused you pain, whatever it may be, entrust yourself. Just like our master Jesus, entrust yourself to him. The Bible says he's not one who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities because he himself has already been tested and he overcame so we have our master jesus to help us so don't be there and feeling this one nobody has ever gone through no there are many people and there are so many examples in the bible but because of time allow me to settle it at that those three when betrayal happens don't allow it to break you or cause you to come down don't let it be your place of defeat rather let it be your stepping stone to greater victories and to greater promotions take it as an opportunity for promotion and you know what from promotions from the lord they are not small when god decides to lift a man when it is time for promotion it is never a small thing everyone will see it 
it is never a secret. So I pray this morning, if it happens to you, remember Jesus, remember David, remember Joseph, and may you overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. And of course, we have some people who did not handle betrayal very well. I may not go through, but I'll just mention. And uh, most of these people, they resorted to bitterness and revenge, which led to massive death and destruction. Now, uh, one of them, it's actually the son of David, Absalom. When his sister was raped by the stepbrother, we know what happened. And then we have uh, the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi. You know when their sister, I don't know why I just speak this, uh, these stories of rape, but maybe because rape is not a small thing. When your sister or even uh, someone dear to you, this happens to them, it is very possible to want to seek revenge and become bitter about it. So we have Simon and Levi, who you remember what they did, and they avenged for their sister Dinah. And also, we have Judas. He's, uh, though he's the one who had betrayed the master Jesus, what happened after that? And maybe I will just want to mention, maybe you're thinking, I'm only talking about those who have been betrayed. What if you yourself, you have betrayed somebody, someone like Judas? Judas had betrayed Jesus. And we see he became very sad because we see Joseph, uh, J uh, Judas at some point, he went and threw back the 30 pieces back to those people when you were wa wamempatia. Alafu wakamwambia, it is your responsibility. And after that, I believe he was so grieved. And after we know, he ended up committing suicide. I pray. Even if it is you who has done it. Like I said, one thing that will carry you through is knowing that God loves you. Yes, it is a mistake. You have caused harm. You have caused a hurt. But God loves you. And God will help you overcome that. Use it as a learning step. You know, learn from that mistake. And when it happens, when God exposes that you have betrayed someone and he actually exposes it means God loves you. The Bible says that God disciplines those he loves. Ukiona vitu zako haziendi huku chini. You know, it's the other day I was just thinking. Like, uh, let me just give an example. The story of nudes in the media. I believe some of us know. Some of us don't know because you have purposed to know very little about evil. Praise be to God. And it is good. And so... Uh, when, when, when this, this uh, has happened, those things, they are in the media. I've actually forgotten what I wanted to say. Let me remember. Okay. Praise be to God. Yeah, yes. I, want to, I was talking about when it is not you who has been betrayed. It is the person, you are the one who has betrayed. How do you go through it? How do you overcome it? You have to believe in the love of Christ. The love of Christ is able to lift you up because uh, you have to be, I uh, remember what I was saying, that God disciplines them that he loves. So when that happened, I was like, there are so many people who are doing those things. Maybe, I hope none came to this service. Praise be to God. And if you came, you repent. And um, they are doing and it never gets to the public. But why these particular people? Because God has a purpose for their lives. That godly sorrow will lead them to repentance. And so when you do things, and God is very quick to reveal, to, to expose and show, thank God that he loves you. Mungu anakupenda. And that is why anakuchapa kiboko, kidogo, na yo kiboko siyo ya kutuwa. Bona our father does not discipline us to kill us. He's disciplining us so that we can be better people. You know, allow me to just mention, when most of these people, I saw sometimes back a lady, a Mokorino, sorry to say so, I have nothing about them. She, there was the same thing that had happened in the media. And then when she was being interviewed, she was being told, what can you tell people about that? And you know, she said, mimi ningeambia watu, 
wasikuwe wanashare hizo vitu really wasikuwe wanashare no don't take those photos those things are demonic that is wickedness praise be to god tatu wacha young people please though now i see it's happening with the married people mungu atusaidie sana that is wickedness hiyo mambo it's let it not be hard those are the things paul would say hayo mambo yasisikike miongoni mwenyu bwana asifiwe those level of wickedness they should not be heard in the church of christ but when you see it happening it's because god is interested with that heart anaona inisipopitia hii njia huyu sitaweza kumshika and we pray that it actually leads to that godly sorrow that will lead to repentance and people turn to god praise be to god so As I conclude I would just want us to give us practical ways how to handle betrayal practical yani ile utasikia this one it is so close to me You see when betrayal happens you may not have known it but do you know the devil knew about it Shetani huwa anajua and nie anaipanga na naona ule mtu anaweza pitia kwa nini anapata nafasi kupitia huyo mtu media team you can project for me second timothy chapter 2 verse 26 second timothy chapter 2 verse 26 and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will church if your will is not fully surrendered unto god and how does satan take captive our will let me just mention two ways one it is our thoughts Secondly it is our emotions I said when betrayal happens the devil knows he's working behind the scenes and he knows someone whom he has taken captive to do his will probably through their thoughts the way they think or through their emotions mtu ako na kahasira mtu ameweka resentment our thought life someone who is very negative someone who has some thoughts which are not clean so satan huwa anajua the devil knows and he plans and i pray church let us surrender our will to god because if you don't there is one who knows you haven't he will hold you captive na atakutumia having been taken captive by him to do his will let's take care of our thoughts in the first service we were told that joseph though he didn't speak did not share he was thinking uko ye peke yake yet god was able to see his thoughts our thoughts are powerful our emotions are also very powerful You choose to move our emotions the right way. Our thoughts we think like Christ, we feel like Christ. If you don't, then the enemy will take you captive. Na atakutumia kufanya zile vitu anataka ufanye. And so when betrayal happens, Satan is very crafty. And one of the things he wants you to he does not want you to see him he wants you to see the offender he immediately instead of seeing who is behind all this the enemy want you to focus on the offender and it happens so many times wakati tunakosewa katika maisha yetu 
Really, are we quick to think but huyo mtu kwa nini amefanya? That is a, that is what the sat Satan wants you to think. Immediately, he removes the focus on himself, usione shetani, uone huyo mtu mwingine. And so, quickly, he wants you to focus on that person. And what do you start doing? Someone has betrayed your secrets, someone has broken a trust. The first thing we want to do is talk about it. Na tuongee maneno mingi na mbaya. Mhm. And speak, you know, nowadays we have phones. So it's very easy. Utakol tu rafiki yako. Umuambia, anafanya, amefanya, amefanya. Sasa ukifika hapo, umianguka mtihani. Because you're focusing on your offender. Now you're trying to revenge. And it happens very fast. If you're not cautious, it happens within a very short time. Mtu amekukosea. Within a very short time. Uneza kuwa ume revenge, ume, uneza kuwa you know, you have allowed other people their hearts to be bitter. I remember w one of these days I had taken my children to school. So usually, because our distance is short, I had taken a cab. So, nika, um, so usually they will tell you the, car, the drivers, na kama wewe, unafanya kazi uba, I'm sorry, to say this is what they do. So if it's a short distance and you want to go to and fro, they tell you, usi request to and fro because it is cheaper. So, you allow muende yo trip moja, alafu u, umalize, alafu akurudishe. So, so, you've done the full journey. So, kama ulilipa 200, ukienda, anakwambia, sijui kama was corrupt. Maybe I was. Um, unalipa 200, so utamlipa mianine. But if you do a two and fro trip, utakuta maybe it is around 300. So, I did that. I think I've done that. I think once. Hey, I've just remembered. I think the Lord was teaching me something. So that morning, I assumed. But, Sazile to Kokaribu to Fike Shule, the driver got another call, a request. And because the request was coming from where I was taking my children to school, Akakubali. And so he tells me, Anani drop, alafu anachukua mteja mwingine. And I'm like, no, but unafa kunirudisha. Makanambe, you didn't tell me. You should have, re no, he, he streamlined me. That is why I'm just realizing Kumbe God was trying to tell you, you're being corrupt. You're corrupting with this because the owners of Uba, Wanisamehe, to praise be to God. And so, hey, unajua kale kahasira kaharaka. I was like, how can he do this to me? Yani, ameniata compound ya shule. Because now, ni ya kudrop na watoto wako, and then, achukue mteja. I felt bad. Na si unajua lazima tupeane feedback ya stars. Mulafikiri nilipeana stars ama siku peana. Naka comment hapo. Actually, they are very, but then they've made it so safe. Because the, the feedback, the, they've actually limited what you can say about that driver. Because I wanted to say more. Praise be to God. Eh, to say more. Uyo, ameni treat vibaya sana. Bitterness. Revenge. I want to hit back. So I'm saying it can happen very, very fast. Now, when revenge, uh, when betrayal happens, when you know it is the devil who is behind it, one of the first things we must do, it is resist the devil. Resist the devil. The Bible says in the first Peter 5, 8, that he is roaming, he is walking about looking for someone to devour. Mtu mwenye atararua. And so we see, at this point when betrayal happens, you need to remember, it is not about that person. It is the devil who has had an opportunity. And so we must resist the devil. Resist the devil. In the book of, uh, uh, the, in, the, in the book of uh, James, it tells us we Submit ourselves to the Lord and we resist the devil. So, utakuwa unaskia bitterness, utakuwa unaskia kurevent, but at that point, resist. Resist, resist. Resist again. Resist to, to write a post at, on Facebook. Resist to call your friend. Yeah? Resist. Because it is the devil. Anatafuta tu nafasi. And remember I said, one thing about betrayal, the, it is about your response.
how do we, I respond? Hapo ndiyo, shetani anataka kukushika. So, in your response, resist. Resist and resist. Don't take revenge. Don't speak wrong words. And also, if it's something, maybe it was a business or something you are desired to do, don't give up on what you meant to do. Don't give up on your dream because it has happened. In the midst of your pain and disappointment, which is, uh, like I said, it is deep. Resist the devil. Resist the temptation to speak, to lash out. Resist the, the temptation to, the desire to defend yourself or even demand that the other person admits their fault. Resist, resist, and resist. And commit yourself to the Lord who is able to carry you through that whole cycle. Choose victory. Choose promotion. Resist the bitterness. Resist the bad mouthing. Resist seeking revenge. Ni kukata. Imambo inakuanga tu kukata. Bwana isu asifiwe. So resist. Number two. After. Atakama uta resist. Kuna ako kauchungu kana kujanga. Na kana itu bitterness. Sio kauchungu. There are many times I'll get angry and my husband will tell me you're angry and they will tell him I'm not angry nasikia vibaya I don't know he's angry kusikia vibaya you know he will tell me you're angry and I'll tell him no I feel bad I don't know maybe you're like me you feel bad and you don't think you're angry that is anger praise be to God until the day I was able to admit so hiyo kauchungu inabaki that bitterness the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 4 that one, we get rid of all bitterness. We are in the New Testament. And in the New Testament, the Bible says the way we get ourselves defiled, it's through bitterness. And how does bitterness defile us? Because di bitterness does not defile you alone. I don't know whether you've met people who are bitter. They are bitter and they go to the next person. You find in such a congregation uta, that out of that bitterness unaambia huyu anatafuka unaambia huyo anatafuka you know that you know maneno mingi na ni maneno sio mazuri bwana yesu asifiwe hata kama ni ya ukweli hata kama ni ya ukweli it doesn't mean we speak out and so the bible is telling us we get rid of bitterness because through which many have been defiled i pray as the church of jesus christ when bitterness comes, let us resist and get rid of it. Otherwise, it leads to defilement. Inakuta kama sa the wonderful choir tuko nayo hapa. Kitu tu kimoja inaongewa. And in a spread and everyone, you become defiled. In these days of revival, God is telling us, we take charge of our hearts. Bitterness, utajua tu mtu ni bitter vile anaongea. And I know, Ata ukitembea kwa barabada, you can tell people who are bitter because of the things they are speaking. Out of the abundance of the mouth, uh, of the heart, the mouth will speak. Get rid of bitterness. When betrayal happens, it is like any other loss. And just like the psychologists will tell us, for any loss that has happened, there are the five stages of grief. Yani, unapitia kasafari. There is denial. First, it is denial. It didn't happen. How could I? How could I find myself in this? Then there is anger. After anger, you may go through a point of depression. Then you get to bargaining. And then that point of accepting. But I pray because you are well equipped with the word of God. You don't have to go through the stages of the psychologist. When it happens, resist. That, that wanting to feel you know, to keep the pain, to, to continue feeling it. When we hold bitterness in our hearts, it is very destructive. It is very de destructive. And again, 
it brings us sorrow, it brings us grief. Like I initially said with David, he did not prolong the mourning. Even though sometimes we'll go through sorrow and grief in our lives, the Lord does not want us to prolong the griefing and the, and the sorrow. Why? Because our master Jesus, he bore our griefs, he bore our sorrows. Praise be to God. We need to move on. We need to move on. And the same way, you don't want to put up with a headache. The same way, you don't want to put up with a stomachache. If you're like me, like ukisikia tu kichwa inauma, unakuwa una, you take a painkiller. It is the same way. You don't have to put up with bitterness. Those things, it is things we have to say, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm the same way I don't put up with sin, with sicknesses, even with bitterness. Hizo vitu zote unaziruhusu ziondoke. As you walk through, you can acknowledge, indeed you have been hurt. It is okay, but get rid of the bitterness. Bitterness is a poison to the mind and body. And it robs us of our victories. I don't know this morning, maybe it is not betrayal, but you're bitter. You're holding on. There's bitterness in your life. Let me tell you, it is that poison when you're in a, in a destroy. Sometimes when you hold forgiveness and you say, I will not forgive that person, it's not that person who is being destroyed. It is you. Bitterness is a poison. And most of the mental, um, the mental sicknesses that we have, they result, they have the mental issues and diseases. They come from bitterness. I don't know. Maybe one day we'll get to share how some of the diseases people have, they are related, you know, to those issues. Anger. When you have anger, when you have bitterness, Kuna vitu zina unakuta ukonai shida. And one of the ways you know, what of, if you keep too much in your heart, unakuwa kifua inauma sana. As in, you know, you're holding so much. If you read in the Old Testament, you'll see the relation about that. I don't have time to go through that. But stop holding on to that bitterness. Because it is you, it is destroying. And at times, when you go through something bad, we have this habit. The, the psychiatrist will tell us, keep narrating eh, what happened, what happened. What ha you know, the more you keep reviving that story, you don't get better. All you need to do is get rid. Yondoke, forgive, let go. Because if you do not, that it is you who is, you're destroying yourself. Staying mad does not bring justice. Kuka umekasirikia mtu because alikufanya hivi. That will not bring you any justice. But we know God is our avenger. He's the God of justice. And he knows how to take care of those injustices, injustices that have been done to our lives. I see my time is almost up. The other thing is loving your betrayer. Jesus tells us to love our enemies. Forgiveness does not mean you excuse their behavior. Forgiveness prevents their behavior from destroying your heart. We don't forgive people because we are assuming what they did. But by letting go, we do not allow their behavior to destroy our hearts. To be a Christian, we forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in us. You know, I was thinking about grace, the grace of God. I'll not continue. I'll finish there. And um, it's so easy for some of us to say how God has been so gracious to us. Ninema, ninema ya mungu. But until that moment, you need to show someone that level of grace. Grace is unmerited favor. So you give someone something they don't deserve. They don't deserve that forgiveness because they did something that was wrong. But you choose to do it. And I was thinking about our little children, whereby you'll buy them a bar of chocolate. 
na unawaletea unawambia I've bought for you then after that you'll ask them please share and what do they tell you no na ni wao linunua and i thought i think some of us are like that we have received so much grace but releasing it mm -mm. we are like that little child i pray today church you may have been hurt the wound is deep i'm not denying it's painful you may have been disappointed but christ has forgiven you you can also forgive others for to us who have been shown mercy you can show it unto others love your enemies not ile ya eh, you know like ile tu ya kuonyeshana we are at peace no loving our enemies means that even when you have an opportunity to do good to them you do it you look actually you look for those opportunities where you can do something good to those people especially our family members look for those opportunities forgive them pray for them you know don't seek revenge don't keep reminding them si unaona vile ulifanya there some stuff who keep reminding there's something they did sometimes back and so every time I keep telling them unakumbuka vile and they will tell you madam si ulini forgive what a kushinda ukiru you know and we are like that it is forgive and let go today church it is my prayer having known that the lord loves us so much he is good and he loves us we can also extend the same love to our brothers to those that have hurt us we can love those we don't deserve to love some of us we are angry we are bitter you need to let go you need to let go because you're hindering yourself to greater victories to greater promotion i agree those people hurt you Those people did you wrong. And even you, you also did wrong. You disobeyed God, but he forgave you. May we extend grace to everyone who comes our way. I will not I'll not tell you that those people will come and apologize. I'll not tell you that the circumstances will change. But when you know this good is meant for me, you will do it you will do it if you're in our midst and maybe you went through betrayal and you from what we've gone through you realize you did not handle it well there's always a chance to go back and do it right and maybe the journey ahead of you you're going to meet betrayal on your way may the lord grant you the grace to overcome it resist the devil allow god to heal our lives church may we stand on our feet